All right, let's get started over here in the grain market. First, we had an overnight sale to tell you about 140,000 metric ton of soybeans. And these are bound for unknown destinations. So uh, not sure where it's going, but it was good to see a, an overnight sale to kick the day off. Let's look at the futures and see if that had any effect on it at all. And then we'll ask Chris Swift about what he thinks. It's May corn up two and three quarters, 363 and three quarters. That new crop corn is up two and a quarter cents. Over in the soybean market, that's where we had the overnight sale. We're six and a half higher on the front month of May. And on the new crop, we're up six and a quarter at 934. But the wheat market is not the same story today. It's new crop July Chicago wheat down four pennies, 464 and a half. Kansas City July wheat down six now at 435 and a quarter. That's despite a frost, Chris Swift. Yeah, I woke up Sunday morning and walked out, and the ground was white with was frost in western Kansas. Yeah, it, it wasn't quite a little bit further east, but uh, but it was cold this morning. We had a little frost here this morning. Yep. So. This overnight sale, did it help support the bean market? Uh, possibly. We were up already overnight about three or four cents before I came in this morning. So um, although it's a great sale, it's not anything significant, I don't think, towards the market. So now we have a trade shortened week this week, we a do. holiday shortened we trade, do. I should say. Uh, that sure hadn't stopped the farmers because when I drove to Kansas City, there wasn't a field that didn't have some kind of work being done to it. Really? Yeah. A lot of field work then? A lot of field work. Fall field yeah. work? Uh, well, we were coming in from, uh, we drove straight up through Missouri on 55, and all of the fields there, they either had a disc in them or some of them even had cedars in behind them. So they're getting ready to plant some corn there. So there was some anhydrous put on evidently at some point then? It's possible. Um, I didn't see very many sprayers out there in the fields, so a lot of it was already had discs. So I guess maybe that far south they had been able to, where uh, maybe up in the northern tier where Nebraska and all had all the water they weren't able to. How much about this afternoon's uh, progress report do you think is going to be factored into this market or the market's anticipated? Um, probably not a great deal. I think a lot of the farm work still north is way, way behind. So down south, yes, we've got a lot of work done, but up north there's probably none been done yet. Technically, can we get a four in front of corn here uh, pretty soon? Um, I don't know. It's kind of tough. It doesn't seem like it wants to go up right now. We're still kind of hugging towards the low end of the range more so than the top end. Somebody was telling me this morning that we are still record short on, in, in the corn market as far as uh, short bought anyway. Uh, 1.4 billion bushel. Yeah, the hedge funds. Yeah, hedge funds are majorly short this market. And, you know, we got a big carry out coming out again this year. And if nothing really dramatically happens from this point forward, we'll still get out a huge corn crop. It may not be to the exact of what they were looking for, but there's no doubt you're going to get a corn crop out this year. Anybody in the trade talking about the Safrina crop down south? Uh, no, no. Pretty quiet. Mm -hmm. So now where do we go with wheat? Because the dollar was weaker. I, you know, I'm not real sure, and, and I had been trying to be friendly wheat for a long time, and just it, the market just wasn't going up, and now it's showing weakness again, and the spreads between Kansas City and Chicago continue to widen out with Chicago premium to Kansas City. Everybody's a little confused about that, but I think it's just persistent deliveries and the availability of wheat worldwide out there. All right. Well, we're going to talk about why you were in Kansas City. Right, right. Up here in just a moment. Be sure and stay with us. Yes. We'll be back in just a moment here on the Market Day Report. Following a strong finish on uh, Friday with the livestock market, a little bit of a weaker start here. Let's go to the futures. And uh, right now, we've got these uh, live cattle futures on the lower side. April fats down 22, June down 13, August down 3 at 118.17. Feeder cattle market, well, it's uh, a little bit on the weaker side as well. The uh, May up 15, that's kind of... It's kind of a reversal from where we started at earlier, Chris. Yeah, there hadn't been much to, to transpire. I got a blow up uh, almost a dollar range today. Interesting. So, yeah. so, and we've got this cattle on feed report that'll we be did. out on Thursday on instead Thursday. of Friday. That's correct. And Friday is a good Friday. That's so, right. uh, cash day. cattle trade. You think it'll wait until after the COF on Thursday? Um, I bet it probably will be. You know, they ended up trading some 26, 27, and I think 28 cash cattle on Friday. So um, I think the Packers probably need a little bit of inventory when they dress them. They find they're a few pounds light on the carcass weights and, you know, one or two more to make up that box load of 40,000 pounds is what they need. So Interesting. All right. Now, let's find okay. out why you went to Kansas okay. City. <laughs> I went there for a pork summit, and uh, it was about the African swine fever. Very interesting. The gentlemen that presented this uh, were so in well informed that at the end, what I came away from was is the world is going to redistribute 
pork. And China is going to be where a large percentage of that redistribute, re redistribution goes to. Now, here in the U.S., when we begin seeing that shortfall of pork production, then all of our domestic end users are going to be searching for more and more product, and I think we'll start to see that impact pork prices. Did the word shortage get tossed out? It, it did. Um, what we really don't know is we don't have any solid data, like what USDA would provide us, and then people can go and they can henpeck back and forth as to whether how correct it is. There is no data that comes out of China. So it is all speculation, but the speculation is they have lost approximately 30% of their hog herd. They produce one half of the world's pork. They, they have one half of the whole total, total hog uh, production over there. If they have lost what they have lost, it will take years to combat this and bring it back because the, it, as best we understand, the Chinese government is in denial of this and there is no vaccine yet. Did anybody talk about what if it reaches U.S. soil? It, it did, and, and we had a great conversation the first five hours. We, we gathered all the information. The next three, we sat around a dinner table and deciphered that information. It, it was brought up. What does it happen? How does it get here to the U.S.? It is highly, uh, not contagious, but transmittable. It can be transmitted in a multitude of different ways by your clothing, by feces, by any other type, blood, any other type of, of trans, transmittance that it can have. It pretty much does. It's got a, an unbelievable survival rate of 1,000 days in a frozen state. So it can easily be retransmitted again, and we begin to see further um, uh, issues from this just because of that retransmission ability. What does all this mean for the uh, U.S. pork market, and is it nervous? Well, it, it is nervous. We've seen a lot of volatility. I think we're going to see even more volatility in it. I don't know that we'll know a specific price direction of it, but for the next several months, we are going to be adjusting price to meet this new environment that we are bringing ourselves into. Fascinating stuff. It is. It really is. Chris, always good to have you on Absolutely. the program. Absolutely, John. I sure appreciate it. You. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Yes, sir. Chris Swift here with us uh, to talk a little bit about the markets here today and what to look for in the pork industry. There's always a lot of good insight. Thanks, Chris. Thanks, John.